pretty much everybody goes overlanding these days. I know because I see max tracks and roto packs at every mall I go to. So that begs the question, can you even go overlanding if your vehicle is stock? Well, I've got my new truck here. I haven't taken it off-roading yet, so I planned a little weekend trip. The plan is we are headed out to Jawbone Canyon and we're going to take the Ridge Road over into the Sequoia National Forest and over to Lake Isabella. This is gonna be a simple, straightforward trip. One truck, no lift, no lights, no rooftop tent, just a modern four-wheel drive truck with the off-road package, but really, we'll see how that does. Also, a big thanks to 70 My for sponsoring this video. They helped out with something I've been considering for a while, a dash cam. Some of you know I'm a bit of a camera nerd, so finding a high quality 4K dash cam was super important. But it's not just about resolution. The 70 My A810 uses Sony StarViz 2 technology and it's HDR capable, so it doesn't lose data in the highlights or the shadows. The Ranger's also not too bad for installs because it's got all these removable trim pieces that were probably for upgrades that I just didn't get. If you're watching this video when it comes out, 70 My is having a Black Friday and Cyber Monday sale until December 3rd. If you want to get really fancy with an install like this, I recommend getting an X-Acto knife and notching your trim pieces where uh, the cable's going to come out. That way they're still going to lie flush. But you can do it with or without. This version has dual channel recording, so I'm mounting the other camera in the back. It's also got a smart parking guardian mode, which is gonna come in super handy. You can power everything by USB-C like I am, or you can hardwire everything. And if you wanna get really fancy, you can hardwire this with a 4G SIM card as well. The 4G module adds route tracking and in-app live streaming, but where I'm going, there's not gonna be any 4G signal. What this truck will need though is an oil change, and on the Ranger, it's kind of a pain in the butt because you have to remove the driver front wheel and this skid plate to access everything properly. Oh, you're back. Um, well, since you're here, let me tell you a little bit more about where we're going. Uh, we're starting off at the Jawbone OHV area. I have never been there before, but I hear it's a relatively easy trail. I never went with the Forerunner because it was a long enough trail that it might be more than a day trip. I'm headed out really early to try and get it done all in one day, but We'll be able to camp over at Lake Isabella on the other side uh, if it is too long. Now the whole point is that for a trip like this, you don't need any of the overlanding stuff. You can go and just take any old truck and go have fun. But that doesn't mean you don't need the normal camping stuff. So I've got important things like my annual pass. I've got my fire permit, even though uh, the area I'm going to is a high fire risk right now and they're only allowing propane fires anyway. Having a paper map or a route plan is good, especially one with GPS coordinates. I've been using this book from Funtrex for like four years, uh, and it's been some really great routes. Normal things like snacks, make sure to bring water, both for drinking and also for cleaning and dousing fires. First aid kit, spare tire, and of course, the stuff to change a spare tire in an off-road environment. And make sure you test it too. You don't wanna be stuck in the wilderness and find out your bottle jack is too short for your truck. Other than that, I did end up hooking up the 4G functionality for the 70 My camera, uh, which gives me GPS coordinates embedded into the video, which is really cool. I've also got app connectivity, so I can check on the camp if I go off on a hike or something like that. So with all that, plus my camping gear, let's get over to Jawbone. A quick drive through the Mojave puts you in the Jawbone OHV area. Trails like this do have markers so you know that you're on the correct random dirt road. This starting area is pretty popular for camping and shooting, but mostly for ATV and dirt bike riding.
The first couple miles were fine in two-wheel drive, but eventually the trail started to get more and more sandy. From here, I stayed in four-wheel drive the rest of the way, and we started climbing the hills towards the Kelso Valley. While the trail itself is well maintained, I lost signal very early on and had to rely on paper maps. Although I will say that the 70 mine dash cam did stay connected to 4G the entire trip. So, I thought this was pretty interesting. It's a water cache. It's not necessarily for people getting lost out here because the road turns into a paved road right here. It's more for if this area gets cut off, uh, where we are pretty remote still. There are people who have their homesteads, well water might run out, cattle might need watering, uh, walking with horses or animals or just, you know, in a situation where you have some bad luck. There's a water cache here, and then on that sign there, it, uh, it has a list of the places nearby where you're likely to find water if there's no water here. After crossing the Kelso Valley, we started to climb towards Paiute Peak. This trail was going to top out at over 8,000 feet in elevation. I think this might be the spot to stop and have some lunch. Uh, we're at about 5,000 feet, and it's crazy because we are already seeing snow. I did not expect that this low down. Um, it's a nice little camping spot though, you know, got a fire pit, You're, uh, you got some nice views, but it's not where I'm gonna camp tonight. We still got uh, a lot of trail to do, but it, does seem like a good spot for some lunch. I don't have the lens for it, but there's a there's a deer up there. Okay, all done with my seaweed and cheese. Let's get back on the road. Oh, oh, can we turn around here? Hey, we fit. This is gonna be such overkill, but I'm happy I get to do this. Tiniest, tiniest bit of snow. Terrain mode, snow. Whew, that was, that was close. We almost didn't make it. But it turns out that I was gonna have to deal with a little bit more snow. It turns out the mountain had gotten its first snow of the year only two days before I started my trip. Now my cabin is in a mountain town where it does snow, but if this got too bad, I was out here without chains or traction boards and would have to turn around. But if we could keep going, there were definitely still cool things to find.
I'll have to come back throughout the year and see if this is ever open. Uh, it's locked up now, but this is super cool. The trail kept on climbing, and as we neared the peak, the temperature got below freezing. But even though it was cold outside, the views were definitely worth it. Not bad. Not bad at all. Could I have done this 20 minutes from my house? What are you, my dad? There might be a better spot to stop, but uh, I don't have time to search for one because I need to start the descent back down to uh, Lake Isabella on the other side. So when I was planning this earlier in the year, uh, this is the campground I checked out. Seems nice, but I think I'm gonna go uh, a little further down the mountain, get some uh, solid ground underneath me. The trouble with going on one of these trips in winter is that it starts to get darker so much earlier and I was racing the sun down the mountain. So, does more expensive mean more better? Wait, no. Can you overland stock? In my opinion, no. Because what I just did, I wouldn't call overlanding. I'd call this camping. It's a bit like trying to play tennis without a racket. Sure, you can do all the things that tennis players do, but unless you have a racket, you're not playing tennis. An overlanding rig is a giant racket. I hope that doesn't sound exclusionary because I'm not trying to say that you can't go out and have fun out in the outdoors. You totally can, I just did. People have been taking vehicles out into the wilderness for years, and you know what they called that? They called that camping. Overlanding is something different. There's an aesthetic to it, there's a style, there's a lifestyle, and you can't really do that unless you're actually participating in it which means getting the max tracks, getting the roto packs, getting the rooftop tents. Outside of that, you're just enjoying nature, enjoying the wilderness, enjoying your truck. And I think that's 100% okay. And more importantly, I think that overlanding is 100% okay too. It's just, you know, it's time to call a spade a spade. And look, I definitely see the appeal of all of that stuff. I mean, I would love a Scottle right now, instead of uh, this. But my point in this video is to say that don't let not having any of that stuff stop you from going out into the wilderness. How serious or casual someone is about off-roading and camping is completely different person to person. I mean, look at me, I'm at a KOA right now. This is like the least camping camping you can possibly do. Also, a huge thanks to 70 Mai for sponsoring the video because without them, I would be at home right now where it's warm. Um, but anyway, I, there are plenty of shots that I wouldn't have been able to get without having that dash cam. Especially when it was getting really dark, their Night Owl Vision 1.8 aperture lenses open up wider than the lenses that I have on all of my professional cameras. So that's why we were able to see still. 
There's a bunch of other cool features like time-lapse recording and super sensing ADAS for improved driver safety. And since that 4G stayed connected the whole time, I know that I can check in on my truck from basically anywhere in the world. They're innovating on safety. They have next-gen driver assistant technology. And of course, I talked about that Sony StarViz 2 technology that's helping give such a great image. Also, I do wanna try this. They make a circular polarizer for their lenses, which will make the shots look even better. But I'll save that for the next video. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm gonna do stuff with the Yaris eventually. We're gonna finish this chili.